Hey everyone, it's Lainey. Welcome back. I am kind of crafting for spring today, but also just kind of getting some things knocked off my to-do list. So first things first, I've got these dish towels. These are from Target. It has a heart on there, but I didn't buy them during Valentine's. I bought them after. So I think that this was just like extra stock, but I fell in love with the green. So let's go ahead and take the tag off. And I love their dish towels because it's two towels for $5. And I typically, you know, try to look for something that doesn't have, that's not too busy. So I'm going to move this one aside. We're not going to be working with this one today. I just want to display this in my kitchen and let me cut this little fluff ball off. But I loved the bottom. You see the details there? And I thought it was a perfect color for, you know, moving into the spring season. So I have some pinkish foil iron on here. And I found the designing Cricut Design Space. I am a, a access member. So I try to use Cricut for everything because unless I create it myself because I pay for it every month. But I just searched under the spring images and found this really cute umbrella with some floral Well, sorry, with some, you know, flowers coming out of the umbrella. You can kind of see it there. And I was originally going to cut this out in the rose gold foil, but I have the pink, I have a pink and a purple that I hadn't opened yet. And, you know, I can use color right now because it's spring. So I just thought that I'd bring this out and also test this out because this is a Hobby Lobby brand. I believe it's the 405 Basics, so I've never used it. So I'm excited to see how this adheres and looks once it gets, you know, applied to the dish towel here. Okay, just double checking to make sure that I weeded everything out. There wasn't too much to weed within the flowers. Oh, and you know what? I forgot to turn on my mini press. I'm going to use my mini press today. I'm going to put it on medium heat, which is two wavy lines. And once it chimes, it's going to be ready. So while that's heating up, let's go ahead and just clean up our little area. This is my lint roller. I'm just going to pick up those little stray pieces there on my mat. Sorry if that noise is too loud for you guys. And also just run it over my dish towel. Okay. And let's bring this in. Yeah, I think that's going to be so cute. I really, I'm really glad that I cut it out in this color. I brought my husband into my craft space and gave him the rolls of the pink and the purple with this. And I was like, which one would you use? And this was his decision. I do have two iron on projects today. So let me go ahead and bring in the other one so I can start weeding that out while this is heating up. This is in black and this is Cricut iron on. And I'm making this bag for a friend of mine or this, this iron-on is actually going to go on a bag, but it is for a friend. And I will link. Well, now it's done. Okay, so let's put this aside. And make sure this is aligned. Oh, you know what? Let's heat the surface real quick. Can't forget the prep. Okay, so we did the lint roller, we heated the towel, and now let's get this placed. Alrighty, so I have it positioned, I'm trying to get it stuck down, and now I'm going to come in with my mini press with constant movement for about 25 to 30 seconds with firm pressure as well. And you just use the mini press as you would a house iron with the constant movement. 
making sure that I'm getting all those little details pressed down. Alrighty, so I think that that was enough time. That little corner needs a little more heat. Let's come back in. And it is a cold, windy day today. So I'm sorry if you hear all that wind. It is it's a crazy windy day. Alrighty, so let's move that aside and let's turn this over. And it's just the glass mat is helping the heat just draw from the dish towel and you can literally feel it cooling down. Okay, so it's pretty cooled. So let me come from the top part and just slowly removing the liner. Perfect. I love this foil. I made a dish towel with the rose gold foil for Easter and it I, it's actually still in my kitchen. I haven't taken down my Easter stuff. What's today? The second. Um, but I need to make some spring stuff so I can replace it. But look at that. How cute. And I decided to go with more of a solid design because there was detail in the towel itself with the vertical lines. So just be mindful of that if you're using a blank like this. You don't want too much open spaces because you really want to be able to see the design. You don't want the dish towel to, you know, take away from the design. Alrighty, so let's move on to craft number two. So bringing back in this black iron on here get this weeded and I will link the font information down below. I believe it is a Cricut font that I used but I found this on the internet this um, verse. I was looking for something faith-based and came across this and I thought this would be fitting and um, you know, hopefully she'll use it for a church bag. And if she doesn't use it, I know one of her girls will. I'm going to stick this down with the magnets to kind of help me out. Okay, almost done here. Alrighty, so let's check this out. So it says, goodness and mercy follow me, Psalms 23, 6. I just thought that this was a beautiful font to display this verse. Let me remove this stuff real quick. All right, and our mini press is still on. So bringing in this cute bag from Hobby Lobby. It was $3.99. It's just their canvas or jute, jute tote canvas front pocket bag. It's a 12 by 12 size if you're curious. And it is a little wompy. Let's try to get this straightened out a bit. Okay, so first things first, bringing in a lint roller again and removing any of the lint or hair that may be on the front of the bag. And there's definitely going to be lint because this is a canvas material. Okay, and now I'm going to bring in the mini press and just run it over this surface to heat it up. I am going to use my mini press because it's out. I didn't want to get my heat press out, so we will see how this ends up working. I think it'll be fine. I'm just going to have to work in sections. Let's try to work some of those wrinkles out. Okay, so let's bring in our design again. And so this is a front pocket. It's got the Velcro right there, and it's got about um, a little over an inch of material, and then there's a seam. So I want to make sure that the design is centered between that seam and then the bottom portion. All right, it's so wompy, I can't get it straightened out. So I'm going to have to bring in measuring tape here and make sure that it's aligned that way. 
and it seems to be. And then let's measure from the top of the letter to the seam. It's about three quarters of an inch. So now it needs to be shifted down just a bit. This is just a little more work, but that is okay. Okay, perfect. Let's check the sides again. Okay, perfect. So it is centered, it is stuck down. And now I'm gonna come in with my mini press still on medium heat. So I'm just working in sections, starting with the goodness, and I'm gonna iron it for about 25 to 30 seconds with firm pressure, and then just move down the bag in sections. So I think that that's the best way to work with this project considering I am using the mini press. And I'm actually glad that I'm using the mini press for this. So I can work in sections because if I had my heat press out, it wouldn't get an even press because the bag is kind of all wompy and it's got these sides here. It wouldn't lay flat and distribute the heat evenly. So this is a better choice. So bear that in mind if you pick up one of these bags and it's like that. Okay, one more press here along the entire thing and then we'll flip it over and let it cool down. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over and let it cool down to a cool peel. Perfect. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my mini press. And that can begin to cool down because we are done with iron on and I love this. How nice is this bag? And this is in black. I originally wanted to do it in navy. I didn't realize that I was out of navy. So I used what I had and this is craft number two. Okay, for the third craft, we need this cup cradle. I've got this candle here called Sugared Berries. It smells so so good. I can't wait to light it. This is from Dollar General. It was $5 and I love, my husband and I both um, love Dollar General. Okay, so what we need to do is prep the surface. So I'm going to bring in my alcohol pump here. I ordered these from Amazon. It came in a three pack. I prefer the pump bottle instead of the spray bottle so I don't spray alcohol everywhere. So I'm just cleaning the surface off where I'm gonna apply the vinyl. And how pretty is this green? I saw this and I was immediately attracted to the color and then I smelt it and then I realized that it was just completely blank and I just had to get it because, you know, it was just a perfect, perfect blank for vinyl and the spring season. So as that alcohol is drying, I'm gonna come in with the design here and this is Tech Wrap in matte white. And I just looked through the spring section of Design Space. And I knew I wanted to add some type of floral. How well did that weed? My goodness. And then I saw this and I just thought that it was perfect. I really liked the spring text, the font style, and then the spacing between the letters or kerning, if you're aware of graphic design terms. Um, and I've just got to weed out some of these intricate little pieces here. All right, so I'm almost done and I brought out my pin pin tool from TechRap and it is working so much better with these little intricate pieces. So I will definitely link this down below. This is hands down the tool to use for these little bitty intricate designs. And this is a new tool to me they sent over and I'm so glad. 
that I finally tried it out. It's working pretty well. All right, so bringing in some transfer tape. This is the black grid transfer tape from TechWrap, and I'm just going to measure it out. Okay, and cut this down. Cut that a bit crooked, but that's okay. All right, taking my weeding tool here and just picking up that transfer tape. And folding it and laying it down, starting at the middle and then working out the sides. Going to bring in my scraper tool here and just get this burnished down on the front and the back. Alrighty, let's bring in our blank and let's see how well this burnished down. Having a little issues with that little plant there. Alrighty. Just trying to make sure that it is not crooked because that is usually what happens with my stuff, but I think that I laid it down okay. So just going to take my scraper and add some pressure. Try to get that stuck down really well. All right, very carefully going to bring in my weeding tool to help pick up that corner, of the transfer tape there. This is beautiful. Well, that is the first. It ripped, but that's okay. Very good. And there's craft number three. How pretty. You guys think? This is definitely my favorite one. I love how this looks. And it's subtle. It's soft. It is perfect. And it smells really good, too. Okay, so bringing in these wooden coasters... I still have some alcohol on the rag, so I'm just gonna go over the surface. It's not removing the paint, I don't think, but it just needs a little wipe down to help that vinyl stick down. Yeah, these are dirty. These came in a four pack from Hobby Lobby. I bought them during Christmas and was gonna use them originally for Christmas, but I ended up doing something else with our Christmas coasters. So bringing them out for spring. And this is a new product to me. I cut this out last night and I was so happy. I will link it down below if I can find it. This is a just an adhesive glitter gold and it cut and weeded perfectly. I tested this out last night and this is the other part here. And this is tech wrap, if I didn't say that. This came in their uh, March mystery box that they sent over to me. And I have this color in the gold. And then I actually have a silver as well. And I was so happy that this worked out. This is perfect. And I cut it on my Cricut Joy Extra. And the setting that I used was um, like premium vinyl gloss. And it cut out so amazingly. Not one issue. I found this design once again in Design Space and it actually was together like this. So I cut it out and then, you know, separated it. But I just thought that it would go nice with the round coasters. All right, last little piece. I think, let me bring in the pin pin tool again. 
There we go. Oh, we got another one. Let's look this over and make sure they're all removed and it looks really good. Just laid down, perfect. Ooh. Let's bring in my scraper tool again. Turn it over and get a good scrape on the back side there. Alrighty, let's remove the backer. Man, the sticky. Just going slow. Look at that. Alrighty, and just positioning it towards the edge. Okay, and let's get this adhered. And one great thing about this is that it's just adhesive vinyl. It's not permanent like an iron on, and I can always remove this after the spring and summer season and maybe do something with the coasters for Christmas. Granted, I do have a four pack, so I do have two other ones that are put up. It's just my husband and I, so we just need two coasters. Let's see how that worked. Look at that. Perfect. How pretty. Glitter vinyl or a shimmer vinyl in gold. It cut well, it weeded well, it transferred well. It looks beautiful. All right, let's work on the second one real quick. I'm gonna come in with that same piece of transfer tape and get it burnished down on both sides. All righty. This transfer tape definitely works really well with this vinyl. All right, let's get that pressed down again. And there you go. You guys, I am in love with this vinyl and how this turned out. I am so happy about this. And like I said, this was together. So I just cut it out together and then, you know, separated it once it was off the mat. And how cute. How stinking cute. So I have this jar here and this is from the Target Bullseye section. I bought this during Christmas. It was $5. And I'm going to go ahead and cut the plastic off here. And it's got a really good seal. So this is, this is going to be perfect for so many things in the pantry. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and clean off the surface. And then I'll get the vinyl and weed that out. So once again using the pump bottle and let's just clean this down. Okay, let's move that aside while that dries. And once more, bringing in the matte white vinyl from Tech Wrap. And I'll link this font information down below as well. Well, come on. Needs, oh, needs a little help right here. And I believe this is a downloaded font from defont.com. And, oh goodness, now you can see that it's kind of coming together. Found the dog bones in Design Space. They were paired like so. And this just says Berkeley's Treats. So these are gonna be dog treats. And just a couple 
couple more pieces here. All right, so now I have the transfer tape. Move the design down there, and I like to fold my transfer tape, place it down in the middle, and then lay it down on the rest of the design. All right, let's see how this transferred. Perfect. All righty, let's move in the blank again and try to get this aligned here. You know what? I might need to set this up. Sorry, you're not able to see. But I really want to make sure that this, oh goodness, is straight. Okay, I think it is. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get this burnished down. And this is actually a gift as well. All right, let's bring in the weeding tool to help pick up that transfer tape. I love this font paired with the bones, it's so cute. And let me check it. How cute, Berkeley's treats, I love this. It turned out great. And like I said, I'll do my best to link all the information down below if you want to recreate this. I absolutely love this font. It is definitely um, giving Ray Dunn vibes. I love it. It's a very modern look for sure. All right, let me go ahead and clean up this little area and then bring in the few crafts that we worked on today so you can see them one last time. All right, everyone, this is it. We've got a couple spring crafts, spring themed crafts here, and a couple of gifts. It definitely checked off some things on the to-do list today. If you have a favorite, please let me know in the comments down below. I am really in love with the coasters and the candle. I think the candle, honestly, is my favorite. It is just so pretty. But all right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.